Hey, so here's a little story about a kid who loved martial arts so much it almost killed him. So my name's Steve Cowan. I'm a third degree Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and I've been doing martial arts my whole life. I started when I was six years old, starting in Judo and moving through karate, boxing, Kung Fu, the usual stuff until getting to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu when I was around about 28 years old. So when I was a young kid, around six years old, uh, I was being bullied and my parents decided, hey, let's put him, we know someone that runs a judo club. So let's put Steve in the judo club, along with his older brother, Bob, my older brother. And we started doing judo at six. So we smashed through judo, really enjoyed it, really loved it. And ended up, you know, winning uh, in 1979, I won the first big tournament we had, which is the Middlesex Junior Judo Championships. And um, from then on, I won quite a lot of things as a kid. And hey, it sealed my passion for martial arts. I remember when we had the VHS videotapes come out, we was managed to get Enter the Dragon by Bruce Lee and I watched it and I was just like, what the heck is this? And you know, I collected all the movies, I watched them hundreds of times each, I had posters up on my wall, I used to get big baggy black pants and tie them up the bottom walking around thinking I was Bruce Lee myself. It was so fun, I had a few friends around there, man. And, um, you know, we used to train together, walk around, practice kicks on each other. And, uh, man, what, what good times. So as I got into my teenage years, like most teenagers, my brain was fried. I didn't know where I was. We understand why now. Um, but I didn't know what I was doing. I was just, you know, cruising along like most guys. And uh, I did bits of karate, some boxing, a bit of this, a bit of kung fu, a bit of karate. Um, moved on. It wasn't until, like, I got into my 20s, mid-20s, I t started taking things a little bit more serious. Um, and started studying a little bit more different martial arts. I remember doing jiu-jitsu to a point where we actually went and entered the first uh, jiu-jitsu tournament, which was basically MMA, you could punch, kick, grapple, throw. That was a really good event, and I went and had one match, and then I won pretty easy. Um, but then I went out with my brother and was out the back having a sandwich or something, come back in and said, oh no, you missed your slot. <laughs> but hey, it's a good times. Uh, 1998, okay, I walked into a store down in Great Yarmouth, this like video store, and they sound VHS tapes. And I had this thing, and it said UFC 1. Okay, and I, was that? I looked at it, walked out, and I said to someone, I spoke to a friend of mine, I said, what's this shit? And he said, oh, I've got the tape, I'll lend it to you. So I borrowed the tape, put it on my garage, and I watched it, and I was just like, what, what? Hey, hang on, there's a guy in a gi, you know, it's always Gracie, going up, beating all these big guys up, and hey, I wear a gi, I started my life at six years old in a gi doing jiu-jitsu, uh, judo, and then that really connected for me. And from that day, I was absolutely hooked. I got some of the tapes already. Because you could buy these tapes, these VHS tapes at the time. All of them, went in my garage, done it every day. Um, then in around about, I think it was like 2000, I, 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 or just before, I can't remember, I went to the Hoist Gracie seminar. And as I went there, I was really so nervous. I was so nervous going to that seminar. So I booked my train, it was in Manchester. I went to, got jumped on the train. Just before I got on the train, I, I literally walked out of the station. I was like, nah, I'm not doing this, I'm too, I'm too scared. Little old me, what am, I, what am I doing, going to hang with this guy that's like beating everyone up? Why, why am I gonna do this? And um, so I literally walked back and I got halfway back and I thought, well, come on, let's just go do it. See what's worse gonna happen. You know, let's take, put one step in front of the other. Um, so we got there got on a train, went all the way there, got to the place, made a really great friend there, um, met a really good friend of mine, Mark Warder, who, who really helped me a lot, and um, met, met Hoist Gracie, addicted, T totally adept. From that day forward, I don't think I've ever not trained Jiu-Jitsu, apart from when I was ill. Um, so from that day, I've literally trained Jiu-Jitsu every day, or studied some type of Jiu-Jitsu every day, since the day that I went to the Hoist Gracie seminar. Now, if you're a new guy from outside looking on, thinking, wow, you know, Look at the journey, he's a black belt, he's done this, done that. Um, it's not all been sunshine and rainbows, as they say, as Rocky says. You know, life isn't always sunshine and rainbows. There's a lot of things that happen on the way, a lot of things that put you down. I'm not going to go into before I started jujitsu because we all have that crap. We all have, we've all been cheated on, we've been divorced, and people, friends stab us in the back. You know, we've been so down in our lives and there's a point in my life I was so down I, I just didn't see a path for my future and I actually tried to end everything all. fortunately I didn't you know I'll tell you what really saved me I'm not, I didn't really want to go on this subject but I'll tell you what really saved me was I always remember the bit from Bruce Lee where that the, the Han slice him he's got blood all over him you know and uh, he just gets it he licks the blood and he looks at him and he's going ah, I'm going to kill you now he didn't say that but 
in his mind, or in my mind, I should say. Um, and that, that remains when, when this incident was happening in my life, that was the image that was in my head. And just like, come on, let's just, ah, let's just fight. Anyway, so I started training jujitsu jitsu um, around about 98, got on board with uh, Gracie in 2000. And trained literally every day. I had a bunch of guys. I had a little gym up. There was there was no there was no jujitsu in Norfolk when I started. There was nobody here. There's no, there no black belts, no, no brown belts, no purple belts, not even a blue belt, not even a white belt. And um, so I got together. Uh, I started training for a while. I got together with a good friend of mine, Hugh, um, and uh, we we went to this place and we just started training. Met really another great friend of mine, Rob Rob Brown, and you know I mean, we started training. His brother come on, and then another guy come in named Tom Tom Johnny. And Tom's still with me today, so is Rob. And, um, you know, we just started training, this little group of people that we just started training with. And then around about 2003, I started to get serious. So I said, right, okay. I went and did a tournament, which I did really well in. And thought, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's take it to the next step. Let's open a, a, a place where people can come and train. Why not? Okay, people come and train. A few, few here and there train. There's nothing major. So what? And, and I went through that entire span. Of, I wanted to train myself. I want to train myself. I didn't want to be... Um, running a business, I already had a business. I didn't want to run a business in martial arts. I wanted to just train. That's why I opened the place up. It was my passion. So when is your passion? It's really easy to show up every day. And I showed up every day, and we trained together. We got good. We had the tournaments. We won. We were doing really well. You know, we we, we had a small group of guys, but we did really well. And um, it, it, it came to that point. And then it was really hard to train with under the Gracie but, uh, banner because. You know, they were so far away and was in little Norwich in the UK. And so then I met this guy, his name was Zemo Seller. And um, I met him instantly, like, you know, when you meet someone, you think, no, I, I really like this guy. I feel, I feel connected. Somehow I was like, I feel I can help me. And well, anyway, I was doing good. When I met him, I did great. He showed me so many things about jujitsu and not just jujitsu, about myself. Now he's, he's so close to me. I'm a really good friend of mine, still my master. And um, I really appreciate everything different. It's amazing. But anyway, so in 2000, 2013, 14, I nearly shut down because I just didn't have enough revenue. I had these two big buildings where I was teaching jiu-jitsu and MMA from, but I didn't have enough people. Um, i have been marketing before in my life. I had a job of marketing, but the, the new social media age was a little bit different. Um, so it start, things started to go a little bit wrong and I had to close one of the buildings and really I didn't have anything. I was struggling to pay my rent, struggling to pay my mortgage. Had a, a few students still, but it just wasn't enough. Sounding a little bit like a little bit of a rocky story, you know. Guy starts a business, business goes bad, gets back up, gets some help as usual, and then uh, makes it and does well and builds a business up that is fairly successful. Um, but there was this thing that happened to me in the middle, so around about the 2000 and six mark I started having some pains and stuff in my legs and I went to the hospital and I said oh, it's, it's nothing it's nothing it got worse and worse and worse and worse and then in, in, in 2012 my kid my kid was born Cairo was born and I had I couldn't walk properly I, I wasn't walking properly do jujitsu because you're grappling but I couldn't walk I couldn't walk I didn't know what it was um, so I went back back to, I'd been back and forward before but it'd been a big spate and I went back and I said I'm not happy Something's wrong, and so they the, the new guy that came he took you know the, the scan you go in the tunnel and he scanned you and he, he kind of came back and he's going, Oh, we need to see you like immediately. I'm like, oh, Okay, maybe they've found something that can, they can just get rid of. Um, but what it was, was, they found a blood clot in my aorta and they said, We we need to get you in like now, don't don't wait, <laughs> get, come today. Um, and they, so of course I set it up, I was like, oh my God, what the hell, man? It's like, what's happened is you somehow got a blood clot and bits of the blood clot are broken off and gone down your femur arteries, into your legs, blocked your calf, blocked your feet. That's why you were having bad legs, etc., etc., etc. We're going to remove the blood clot. So eight hours on the operating table. Mel's calling up, where is he? Is he fine? Oh, we can't answer you. She's like going crazy. Um, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I woke up from it. I woke up and it was done. I was like, what the hell? But it was good. I woke up. That was great. And I, I want to go off on a side note as well here. And um, when, I don't know if you've ever had this, 
you are on an operating table for say eight hours or maybe a shorter time or you've had that sleep or something where you don't actually have anything you're, there's nothing going on in your head there's no thoughts it's just inky blackness everywhere but you know you're there that was a revelation for me as well but that's going to be saved let's save that for another video but that was crazy that was a big thing for me i woke up but before the operation i got to the i got to the hospital went to the hospital cack in my pants and um i was sitting there and they put the epidural in my back to knock me out i need to numb everything they went to stick the needle in i got they actually went in and I was like, I can't do it. My, my nerves just killed me. And I just went to stand up and say, I'm out. I refuse. I had to literally sign this thing to say, hey, if you die, it's not our fault. It's like, oh, bloody hell. Anyway, so I went to get up to say, oh, no. But just, I was gone. It was literally gone. And then woke up. But I knew I was gone. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was a really scary time. I came back, but I managed to cure. They managed to get the blood clot and clear. And it's still clear today. Um, but... The, the damage was done. So obviously I've got these little bits that have blocked your arteries in your, in your legs, your calves, your feet. Um, but your body's so amazing. It creates new, smaller arteries to go around. It doesn't give enough supply, but it gives you enough. So your body's such an amazing thing. As long as you keep it healthy, keep going. Um, but how did we, how did I, how did I get that blood clot? Well, I had all the tests done, you know, for clotting, for or maybe you've got this thing that your blood clots a lot easier or this. And I had it all done. Everything was normal. That was good, you know. And it, the, the, the surgeon was just like, I just don't understand it. And I spoke with him and I said, well, would an impactual do something? He said, well, it'd be very rare. It'd be very, very rare. But I said, would it be rarer than that happening with my condition where I'm, I've got no clotting issues or anything? Would it, What's rarer? And he said, well more than likely then it could possibly be an impactful thing um what you know what do you do <laughs> so well, i train like a psycho for for tournaments and i do this thing where people jump all over you and do jiu-jitsu all the time and have big 20 stone guys crushing you and he's like hmm. he didn't say yes or no in my mind i think yes i think because there's no other explanation and i always love to say the stories like jiu-jitsu helped me so much. It took me out of that place in your 20s, your late 20s, when you, you ain't got a clue where you go. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah, a lot of people, oh, yes, I, I know, I'm going to be the next president or what have you. But in your mid-20s, late 20s, you ain't got a clue. You're just going through this fog of life. And um, it helped me get, get out of that. And it put me on a path to have what I have today, which is I have a nice business. Um, I have an amazing family. I have such a, I'm, I'm so appreciative of the family that I have. You know, I have a, a beautiful partner and I have an amazing child. Um, I have an amazing stepdaughter as well. And you know, these, these things are just not given. But on top of that, what Jiu Jitsu give me is it give me so many friends, you know, um, Zayn Marcella, um, I have all my guys that are still with me that started literally on day one. You know, of course you meet the people on the way that are going to try and get what they can from you. Of course you do. That happens in everywhere in life. And you can't blame them. They probably, they need something. You need something. But if they take from you, it means you help them in some way. So you're still helping people, which is a good thing. Now the other great thing about jujitsu, it keeps you healthy. As long as you don't train like a psycho. <laughs> but it does keep you healthy. Here I am at 55 years old. And I'm still going, I still train jiu-jitsu. I have issues with my legs, of course. But I still train jiu-jitsu in pretty reasonable shape for a 55-year-old. You know, I can walk some distances a lot better today than I used to be able to. But, like I said before, the people you meet on your journey, it's like a life journey. You walk in this journey, whatever life you take, you take the jiu-jitsu journey, you're walking it, and you'll meet other travelers. People also walk in the same path as you. You know, some people come on the path, and they want to take something from you. Some people come on your path and they want to walk with you because they want to see you get just as far as they do. And that's what is beautiful about jujitsu. And I still train today, like I said, and you can still find me literally every day training jujitsu at my gym here in Norwich. And what an amazing journey it's been. But it did save me. But it nearly killed me at the same time.